All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking video. Today we're going to do a DNS build on CentOS 8. So let's put together our checklist. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new VM, and that'll be my DNS server. Uh, you don't have to do that, right? I could install bind and bind utilities on, um, on an already existing VM, but we're going to do it from scratch because I'm going to do it with a server build uh, that's an option when you when you install CentOS. Now, after we get everything installed, then what we have to do, of course, is configure the server. So we're gonna build a forward zone and a reverse zone, and we'll see what that looks like. And then we'll have a client that we gotta configure to test our server. And of course, before we can do that, we gotta run the service, figure out how to get uh, requests through the firewall, things like that. So, without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the files so there's a collection of files that need to work together the first one is named.conf and that one is going to have the actual definition for your domain in there the uh, the second one that we're going to talk about is the forward uh, zone or the forward zone file and that is where we're going to have all of our name server and address records so that's our forward lookup. That's the lookup that we're used to doing. I need the IP address that goes with this name. Okay, the reverse zone is also one that we're gonna set up, which says, if I wanna look up an IP address, what's the name that goes along with that? So there we have it. So those are our, our main files. Now there are a couple of other files, right? We could do something with uh, loopback. Um, and then also when you do a build, there's a root server file or a hinting file for the root servers called named.ca. But let's get on to our actual build. So as I said, I'm going to do a new VM for this. So we're going to go ahead and set that up right now. And again, we're going to do CentOS 8. There we go. Linux, yep. And we will call this CentOS DNS. Uh, I'm going to store it as a single file. It's just a personal preference. And we're going to be NATed, so that's fine for right now because we've got to do the install. All right, so let's power up our VM. And so what I'm going to do is I'll get us to the point in the install where it actually starts and then we'll pause the video because I don't want it to be four years long. We're starting up. And as always, I'm going to do everything that I would have you do if you were going to build it. And if I make mistakes, I'll leave them right in there because you're going to make mistakes in config files unless you're just awesome. Uh, so that's the way that we're going to work this too. I'll cut it for length, you know, or if I sit here and contemplate my navel for too long, then I'll cut those out. But uh, everything that I do will be part of this video. Hey, there we go. So English, that's me, sure. All right, so one of the things we want to make sure that we do is turn on our network. We're done with that. Take care of our Partitioning, yeah, sure, looks good. Bum, bum. Give me a second here, installation source. I guess we could do, while it's figuring things out here, we could do the root password. Passwords do not match. Oh, great. What did I do? Oh, 
documents. Aha, uh -huh, that's what I did. There we go. Okay, installation source, closest mirror, I like that, that's fine. Now, one of the things that um, you'll occasionally get an error on the install is if you don't have your network up, it can't figure out where your installation source is. So, pro tip, make sure you get your, um, make sure you get your network interface up. All right, so which option do we want here with our software selection? Now in CentOS 7, we're used to being able to select, you know, server with a GUI and then maybe see DNS pop up right over here. But this is CentOS 8, and so which one do we use? Now, as I said, we could do the command line, and maybe we'll have to do that. But just for fun, let's see what uh, what options we have. Well, I'm not seeing anything that's really obvious as far as DNS, but we do see this network server. So maybe we'll just try that, see what happens. There we go, and we'll begin the installation. Now I decided to do a server instead of a server with a GUI because I'm just going to try and save a little bit of time. But I'll pause the recording right here and we'll come back when we're fully installed. Okay, we're back. So the install has run through and we're here at the first login. So let's, that's not going to work. Okay, so the question was, it wasn't obvious whether or not uh, DNS or bind was installed, so why don't we do something like this. Uh, well, that doesn't look good. So let's also do... So we don't see name D here. It's probably nothing in slash etc either, so I'm going to go ahead and install bind. Well, that would certainly indicate that uh, it needed to be installed. And there's name D. All right, so the first thing I think that we'll do is, uh, maybe we'll go do the uh, named.conf file in, um, in ETC. Okay, so what we have to do here is define the domain that we're going to use. So if we take a look down here, right, so these are all the options, but what we need here is a zone definition. So let's go ahead and add that. Now, let me see, what zone should I use? Well, I think the zone that I, did I say what I was going to use in the, the slides? Hold on one sec. Yeah, I did. So let's let's go ahead and use this mine.bruce.com.dns. We'll use uh, well that'll be the the um, that'll be the name of the forward lookup file. But let's put that in put the domain anyway in in uh, named.conf. the other things that uh, is good to point out here is that punctuation is very very important in these files well and let's let's actually make some of the files really easy to find now whatever file I want to use here I have to make sure that I use the exact name that you know that I call the file so actually so to to make things really clear let's go ahead and make it forward.bruce.com Okay, and yeah, I think that'll. And actually, let's let's make this make it really clear what's going on here. We'll do that. No reason to complicate things, and uh, that'll do it. Now we're also going to need a reverse lookup uh, for our our zones. 
So let's do... Now the reverse zones have kind of a funny naming convention. So the zone is actually the reverse of whatever your IP address is going to be because that's actually the way that it reads it. So I think the... Um, let's see, the IP address scheme that I pick here... Pick something in the 172. And then we're going to add some keywords and tricky phrases at the end of this here. So, whoops, that's not going to work. Now again, this will be the exact name of the file that we're going to use. Let's, I don't know what we can get away with. Lots of folks don't like to preface this with a DB or something like that. So we're going to do Yeah, it looks like I forgot the key, our keyword here. So we'll stick that in there. And Looks okay. Right, one thing we can take a peek at before we before we leave this, we've got the directory here, and this sort of tells us where we've got to put those zone files. And then also we have this allow query line. Now this may be a problem for us later on because this says localhost, so this is not allowing qu queries from anybody else. Now we have the ability to check the file real quick, and in this case, no, no response is a good response. And so that looks pretty good. All right, let's navigate over to var name D. And now we're gonna create our, our forward zones. Now, because I just created these zones on the fly, uh, there's no telling if I'll actually remember exactly how they're how they're supposed to be. So um, I will try, and then whatever errors we run into, well, that's what we're going to have to fix. So let's start with our forward forward file. And I think I just called that forward.bruce.com. Now a lot of folks like to have the .dns on there. You certainly could. Uh, actually, it's probably a recommended practice, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, there's a whole bunch of options here, and the syntax is really, really important. So uh, let's just be mindful of that as we're going. So I've got notes next to me here. I encourage you to have some notes, too, while you're writing this. But without further ado, here we go. The forward lookup zone file for Bruce.com. So the first thing that we need is uh, a time to live uh, entry. So we're going to do that like this. Now the next line is probably one of the more important. Um, it has these directives here, origin, uh, and this is one of the things that we've got, got to be consistent about, and this allows you to just put that in front of everybody else, and then as that assumes that all of the lines or all of the references to this are all using the same same value in this, in, in this directive. So, for us, that's Bruce.com. Now, another important line here is our uh, start of authority. In this line, we want to name our name server. So I'm just going to do the standard convention ns1 at Bruce.com. And then that's followed by an email. Uh, so. Something like that. Let me see, I like it. Oh, let's make sure we leave, we put in our dots at the end. All right. Now the next set of fields is all of our timers that are associated with how the servers interact with each other, uh, how long entries live, things of that sort. Now the first one is a serial number that lets somebody know whether or not 
they have the most up-to-date information. So it's very commonly a date, and then if you make changes, it's a good idea to increment the serial number. I want to set it through that. So we'll just say that this is the serial number. We have our refresh. Retry. Expiry. Oops. And then maybe our minimum lifetime. Okay, so that's good for the timers associated with this particular zone. So all of this so far has to do with the start of authority. And I've said that the start of authority here is my name server. So what we've got to do now is describe who the name server is. All right, so that we, we have this, this record now that indicates that our name server is part of the domain. Whoops, let's add this, there we go. Now, let's add an address record for that name server. Now, the nice thing about doing it this way is because we've got the origin in there, we get to automatically assume that ns1 means ns1 at uh, bruce.com or ns1.bruce.com. And what will our address be? Well, we'll just make it easy. We'll make it dot zero or dot one. And I forgot another period there. Now let's wait, make one more entry here for our client. And I don't know, we'll just call it client1. And 16. And now, of course, we now know that that'll be client1.bruce.com. Now we could also put in here something called a canonical name entry. Yeah, why not? We'll do a uh, Dr. H. Now a canonical name is, you know, sort of like a nickname. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on, but here's how we might put one in here. We've got to find some way to tie what I just typed in there to some other entry without adding another address line. So we'll say that this is a C name and we'll just reference, not that. Something like that. Okay, I think that about does it for our forward zone file. All right, so now we've got to make our reverse lookup zone file. And I'm trying to remember what I, what I put down, so sometimes I'll open up another terminal. There we go, so here is the entry line. So we need a reverse .0 .16 .172. Oops. Okay, so. All right, so this is very similar to what we did in the previous file, but this time we got to figure out a way to write the entries so that they can give, we can get the, um, the name that goes with the IP address instead of the other way around. So a lot of this will be the same. Now, just like the previous origin statement allowed us to assume that everything was going to go bruce.com after whatever the name was, here we've got an IP address that's going to be appended to everything that we put on, and it's going to be the reverse. So we, our origin statement is going to look a little different. So for us, that looks something like this. So that is the, um, the part of the address that would be appended to every, every address that we see in the file. So that is, that signifies the reverse lookup. And now we got our start of authority line.
Now, this is where things get a little bit different, right? Because these are the reverse lookups. So dot one is going to be prefaced by 172.16.0, which we see in the origin. And uh, the dot or the dot one here is my name server. So I want a pointer to what? Well, I want a pointer to my name server. Jeez, I keep forgetting those periods. And let's add another one for our client. So hopefully I haven't left out too much in the way of punctuation or um, details, but that looks pretty good. Okay, let's save this. Now we have a basic problem here in that I've installed Bind and I've got theoretically my files configured, but I don't actually have a name server, right? I haven't, I haven't changed the name of this file I, or this machine. I haven't changed the IP address of this machine, so we've got to take care of those as well. In fact, uh, there's a DHCP server sitting on the NAT uh, interface that I'm sitting on, so all of my addressing information is coming from there. So let's find out what our IP address is currently. So we're on the 192 network. We don't want to do that, and we've got ENS33. So. So I'm going to edit my network configuration file. And we can see that we are set up for DHCP. And we don't want that. And I think it's that. We'll do 172.16.01. Set up the mask. We don't actually need a gateway, but we'll go ahead and put it in there. Just for fun. And then I'll do it. Bring, bring it back up. Well, I didn't want to activate. What did I do here in the file? Maybe I got a little nutty here. Oops. There we go. Got a little crazy. So now let's see what our address is. There we go. Correct address on the on my name server. But let's go ahead and change the name of the name server. And for that we're going to use hostname control. And we'll use our friend sudo here. one. There we go. Okay, so we've got the host name running, or we got the host name changed, we've got the IP address changed, we've done our configuration files, and we run the service. Probably not. So it looks like we threw an error. So without uh, without going any farther, what we can do is see if we can track down the error with uh, with some of the tools that we have associated with NameD. Now I can look in bar log messages and I can do the journal control here, but let's try something else first. All right, so it wouldn't start, so we probably have errors in our files somewhere. So let's take a look at the files, but we can also run another tool called Checksum. So let's try that. Oops. And we'll do um, let's 
So what does it say here? It says an error loading the file uh, because uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. oh, uh, start of authority record now at the top of the zone. Ah, so we gotta take a look at that. So let's edit the file real quick. All right, so I take a quick look at this and I see it looks like I forgot a period. So let's try that. Did I forget any other periods? My columns look okay. All right. So let's try this again. Hey, look at that. Okay. Boy, punctuation makes all the difference. All right, clear all that nonsense off. So I just ran the check zone on my reverse zone. Let's take a look at that namedy.conf and make sure that I didn't have anything screwed up in there. All right, well, there's the zones that we added. Punctuation brackets, punctuate, oh. There we go. So let's try that. Let's go back over here. Should we try it again? All right, so we missed some punctuation in the forward, missed some punctuation in the reverse. Uh, let's see, I just checked the, right, checked our named.comp, I missed some punctuation there. For heaven's sakes. All right, that looks okay. We'll do the same thing, but we're gonna do the reverse zone. So zero, oops. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think we're finally okay to try our service again. So let's give it a whack. Why not? Ha ha, success. All right, so theoretically, we have a name server that's up and running. We have a fully configured domain. We changed the name of our uh, name server and we change the IP address of our server. So let's try a query. Let's do one more thing Let's do We're gonna add this guy here and We're gonna add a name server That is that points to uh, our particular our name server, which is us. One of the things that I should say about files like these, a lot of times they're overwritten. There's a lot of ways to do these. So if you have a network manager or something like that, all of this stuff will be get um, overwritten. But for what we're doing right now, this will be all right. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. I got, uh, got called away, but let's see if we can sort of recap. So what we've done so far is we edited the uh, namedy.conf file and we created our zone files and then we did a bunch of checks but let's make sure that we we understand you know all the things that we've done so far so we'll go through them real quick so we'll take a look at the namedy whoops dot conf file first and I'll just go down through everything that I that I did here. All right, so we um, I commented out this line because we want to listen for everybody, uh, not just do some testing. Uh, 
We also allowed query from anywhere. That starts off as localhost, and I had it originally, I think, earlier on in the video that I added the subnet, but I changed it to any because that's the way that you would do it to begin with. Although certainly you could for you know limited testing, just put in uh, your subnet or your address space. Uh, we're not doing recursion with this server. There's nobody else to talk to. I'm not doing DNS sec at all. Oh, the other thing that I did is I got rid of, uh, I just deleted the line for IP version six. All right, so now we've got my two zones and this is where the punctuation got me in the earlier errors. So we're um, type master and then here is the name of the file. I also included the full, full pathway. You can leave that out because remember there's a directory above that. Uh, you know, there's a, um, a directory variable that tells it where to find the files. But um, I couldn't remember where I was, so I just went back and, and stuck that in there. Here is the reverse zone, same thing. And the file name just has to be the exact same file that you're using. And I think that's it. Okay, so now let's take a look at Oops. The forward zone. And now well, let's do it this way. Let's do There we go. Okay. So we the important lines. Whoops. The important line is the origin line that specifies what you're going to attach to the end of every every entry here. And so you can do it without the origin line, but then all of your statements have to have the full full domain name in there. Um, all of the things in the parentheses are specific to uh, the configuration for the name server, all the timers. And then we've got our individual records with the name server defined and then the address records for uh, all of the clients. And so you specify the name of the client and the origin allows that to be filled out and then of course we've got the IP addresses. Just for fun I added uh, a canonical name entry. Okay so let's take a look at the reverse zone file. There we go and it's very same thing right you got a TTL we have got the origin statement but it's weird right it's backwards uh, and then we've got all the timers associated with this and then the name server defined and the pointer records, which are a reference from, you know, the IP address to the name. So we've got it now, now both ways. All right. Uh, and just to remind ourselves that, right, we did the, um, we used, let's see, where am I? You got to be, to use name D dot, uh, the, the check zones and check figures, you got to be in the, in the directory. So earlier I had done this, uh, check zone and then roots.com and then all right and we got okay and I had also done the reverse also. Okay, whoops, I forgot to add the, uh, <laughs> forgot to add the reverse zone. Uh oh. Oh, for heaven's sakes. There we go, that looks better. All right, sorry about that, everybody. Let me, we'll make it clear. There we go. Okay, so that's how you use check zone. If I go over to ETC, I can also do a name D oops, check config and with no errors returned that tells me it's a pretty good, pretty good file. All right. So we ran the service. Okay. Uh, and everything was good. Let's see. Uh, with regard to the configuration for uh, the server. Right, I changed the name of the or the name of the server, which you can see down here, and then of course 
the uh, the IP address to 172.16.01. So this is the name of this server is um, ns1.bruce.com. So we did that with the host name control command. And oh, uh, let's also make sure that other folks can talk to the server. It doesn't matter what you do in the file if you've got you know firewall D or SD Linux blocking your config. So some other things that um, that had to be done to get this server up and running. Um, I can't remember if I did them on this config. Well, well, we'll find out here in a second. Well, let's do. Well, I'll put it at the top. There we go. So, so what we're going to do is uh, open up ports for the DNS requests to come in, and then we're going to add DNS to the firewall uh, services allowed list if we haven't already. So, there we go. Okay. So it looks like I already did it. And we'll, just to be complete, we'll add this guy here. And then we're also gonna do add service equal to DNS. Do I have the syntax right? I do. Okay. Now what I wanna be able to see is that when I do There we go. So we want to see DNS in that list. Okay. So we've got the DNS. Well, we can do, um, uh, let's do this too. There we go. Okay. So we can see that uh, named is running, right? To the Berkeley Internet name domain, right? Bind. Uh, and we are running. And the only thing that, uh, let's see, the only thing that's that's kind of quasi-error here is that it couldn't get the DNS keys, but we're not doing DNSSEC anyway, so who cares? Uh, but we've got successes here. So everything looks pretty good for DNS or named D. So let's do a couple of tests. And I think, um, I may have mentioned this earlier, but DIG and, and NSLOOKUP are the two really big ones that we can use here. Now I can do a command line sort of thing here. I can say something like this, right, right on the command line. And there's the answer that comes back from my forward zone file. This is the forward lookup. And we can see that uh, I asked it about ns1.bruce.com and it gave me the IP address. I can also make it interactive. So I can say like this and then Now this is an important uh, idea here because I'm sitting on my my name server, the one that I created. I'm not a client at this this point, although I guess I sort of am because I am querying the server, but I'm not an external node, right? I'm just querying the server. If you can't query the server when you're sitting on the box itself, then other folks outside of uh, this particular VM or your particular host are not going to be able to query it either. All right. So let's do another forward lookup. Uh, that's not going to work. Okay, so this uh, this comes back with 172.16.02, and of course that's correct. So those are the forward lookups. Um, but if we take a look at the, let me log in here. And we'll just take a look at the, the, the forward lookup file, because we put some other stuff in there, remember? OK, I've got this canonical uh, entry here. So I just did the two forward lookups, NS1 and client1. But that Dr. H, what is that, uh, what is that actually referred to? Well, that's a canonical name that's a pointer to client one. So let's see what happens if I do Dr. H. And what this comes back with is the, the node that this, this particular canonical name is associated with. So everything looks pretty good so far. Everything in my forward zone looks like it's working. Can I do the, the reverse zone? 
So the reverse zone would get, be, I'm gonna put in an IP address, and this should give me uh, the name associated with the IP address. And there we have it, ns1.bruce.com. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's try the only other entry in the file. There we go, client1.bruce.com. So it looks like, at least sitting here on my server, everything is working pretty well. All right, so let's go over to the client. Okay, now, by way of configuration, the only thing that I've done on the client besides booting it up is change the IP address, right? So I'm on the same network. And I changed the, um, oh, I haven't actually done the, um, the host name yet. So we could do that. We could say, so this is the same thing that you would do, spell it right. So we did that. I don't really need it because I'm on the client side. I mean, who cares? But um, that was that sort of completes all of the operations. Now the only other thing that I did was edit the same file that I did on the uh, on the server, which is this guy here. And I, hmm, I guess I maybe I didn't. Well, that's okay. That's okay. So I could um, I could edit resolve.config, but this gives me an, uh, a chance to show you another way to do this. So let's say that I have NS lookup, but I don't know uh, what the server is, or I want to pick a particular server to query. Now I could put it in resolve.config. I could let the network manager solve it, or I could just set it with NS lookup. So what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to say your server that right there okay so now let's do the same queries that we did from the client side so we'll try the server first very nice so that comes back from the server and let's try that works so 1602 very good now let's try the reverse So there's the name associated with that IP address. And there we go, there's the name associated with this IP address. So there we go, there's our client talking to the server and pulling up all the same kinds of, of queries and, and answers that we did when we were sitting resident on the server. But you don't have to believe me, because we can prove it. So I'm gonna capture on on VMNet, uh, on VMNet 8, which happens to be the NAT interface, and I'm going to filter on DNS. So we're, we've got a capture going right now, and let's go ahead and see if these captures are going across the wire between the server. And I'll just do two of them really quick. Okay, and we'll do the IP address associated with the client. Now what's happening here is that we're using the DNS protocol, or the protocol associated with DNS, to make our queries. And remember that it's very, very structured, and we should be able to see all of the, the answers and the queries. So here is our original query. So again, if we go back and see the first one that I did when I was sitting here, uh, when I was gonna do the, um, the capture, I did ns1.bruce.com, and then we did the reverse for the client. So here is the first, well, let's see. Uh, we want, yep, here's the, the first query that goes out and we can see it right there. What is the IP address that goes along with ns1.bruce.com? And the server comes back and said, well, I've got a couple of answers for you. There we go, okay. And by the way, here's the name server. And then we turned right around and said, well, now let's see, we made the request again, there we go, whoops. Here is the reverse uh, lookup that we went and did. 
what is this IP address and now you know why we structure that file in the way that we do. Take a look at this the format of this particular response and then the server comes back and says oh by the way that's client1.bruce.com well, there you go alright I think that about wraps it up for this particular build uh, there are lots and lots of resources you can look online there's lots and lots of folks that have done this but um, I sometimes find it confusing because there are so many of them and somebody did it but you didn't get to see the actual operation and so uh, that's why I decided to do this but there are lots and lots of other resources out there don't forget the man pages for all the config files that are out there the RFCs and of course references for bind as well so this has been a CentOS 8 DNS build we did namedconfig in slash etc we went to var named and we did our forward and reverse zones we did our testing with uh, name config check or check config and uh, and check zone. You have to be in the directories to do those. We dropped uh, the firewall rules or at least we we modified the firewall rules to let uh, DNS requests in. We did a lot of editing in the in the name config file to uh, pick up requests that were coming into the server and that's also where we specified our zones and then on the client side we just pointed it at the uh, at the server and now we know there's three ways really to work with with NS lookup you can do it interactively you can do um, as one command or you can run NS lookup and then specify the server that you um, that you want to look at well thanks for watching thanks for listening like and subscribe if I helped and I certainly hope that I did May your packets always reach their destinations, even if they're just going between your client and server.